graduate? Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, before we start, I'd like to say it's my distinct pleasure to uh, welcome my constituents, a number who are from uh, Bristol Bay who are here tonight. I hope you're enjoying your week in Juneau. Uh, we are uh, here as representatives of the House Majority Coalition. To my immediate right is Majority Leader Chris Tuck from Anchorage. To my far right, Representative Paul Homer, who is a coach. Uh, Paul <laughs> Seaton from Homer. <laughs> he just got a new name. Yeah. Uh, Paul Seaton from Homer, who is the co-chair of the House Finance Committee. And to my left is the House Rules uh, Chairwoman, uh, Representative Gabrielle Ledoux. So what we'd like to do is provide some comments on the governor's state of the state, which we all saw just moments ago. And I think I would like to start by saying that uh, I, I first off want to commend Governor Walker for leading the way in making the difficult decisions with the uh, uncertain future uh, of Alaska as it relates to our fiscal uh, situation. I think he has taken risks. Um, as you heard tonight, uh, he talked openly about having to make the difficult decision about cutting the permanent fund dividend in half. But he's also, I think, taken courageous steps to make tough decisions about reducing the budget, about uh, leading the way uh, relative to uh, the very difficult uh, topic of uh, new revenues. And you heard tonight that, uh, that he, as well as I think uh, most of us here in the legislature and, and certainly many around the state, are optimistic about our future. Um, the last two years, we have seen an uptick in uh, oil production. Uh, we've, we've seen over the last few months uh, exciting announcements about uh, potential developments on state land, on federal land, perhaps somewhere down the road, maybe developments in the offshore uh, sector. We've also heard uh, the very exciting news for the first time in 40 years that ANWR will be opened up for exploration. But we also know that Alaska faces challenges. We also know that uh, we have the dubious distinction of being the state with the largest long-term deficit, the state, the largest long-term deficit in the country. And the good news is if we make those tough choices, we can manage our way out of this. We can provide our families, our communities, our statewide economy with certainty but we have to make those tough choices. I'm very proud to be a part of a majority coalition here in the House who took the political risks last session to put a full fiscal plan into motion. We sent it over to the Senate. We stand by that plan, and we also stand here tonight to talk about our commitment to putting Alaska back on a sustainable fiscal footing. With that, I would like to um, turn to Majority Leader Tuck for any comments, certainly our co-chair of finance and our chairwoman of uh, rules as well. Representative Tuck. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> well, first I want to thank all of you for being here. Thank our press corps, the Capitol Press Corps, for your hard work on behalf of the people of Alaska. I just learned from Representative Wool just a little while ago that uh, we no longer have a whole lot of public radio in Fairbanks, nor do we have gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage. So uh, we rely on you guys on communicating to Alaskans um, what we're doing, what we're about, and really making us accountable. Uh, so we are encouraged that you keep asking the hard questions, that you're speaking the truth to power and holding us accountable for those actions. Um, we will not tolerate any type of infringement of your rights of any kind. Uh, so we welcome you here and want to thank you for your participation because in many ways, you guys are the ones that are connecting us to the fourth branch of government and that's the people of Alaska. Um, I will say that uh, Governor Walker did a very good job tonight. I want to thank him for his uh, um, acknowledgments of what we did in this coalition last year. Last year, we did pass, pass a comprehensive fiscal plan, did it within 90 days, when oftentimes sitting up here looking at our Capitol Press Corps, I saw a doubt in your eyes. I saw a doubt in your eyes. And, uh, and we did it. And um, in this, Governor Walker's leadership provided the courage to take action and take charge, which we followed. It also, um, uh, him with uh, Byron Malott coming together showed that uh, people of different party affiliations uh, can come together around issues that are important to Alaska. We have Alaska independents, Alaska Democrats, Alaska Republicans that have put away partisan politics 
to do what's best for Alaska. And we're going back to those days where that's exactly what we did, is once we got elected, we did what's best. And I'm glad that we're going back to those days. And I think that was pretty much the spirit of the governor's speech. The good old fashioned pioneering days of hard work, dedication, and the will to succeed. And that resonated with me, and I believe that resonated with most of Alaskans. Are there any additional opening comments? If not, uh, we will turn to questions. Just please identify yourself. Please identify yourself as you ask uh, your questions. Hi, Rich Mauer, Channel 2 in Anchorage. So uh, the governor really spoke a lot about, um, uh, about the fiscal plan and about the budget. Uh, how do you convince the Senate that there does need to be a fiscal plan? Well, one of the big differences this year is I think the numbers speak even more loudly for themselves. Uh, our primary savings account last year, somewhere within the $5 billion range, has now been spent down to a projected $2 billion. Um, we're now in a situation in Alaska where for the first time in our state's history, we will have to use the earnings from the permanent fund to balance the budget. I think those facts speak for themselves. Uh, we're here uh, tonight and certainly throughout the rest of the session to work with the Senate, to roll up our sleeves and to make the tough decisions and to hold uh, the long hearings it's gonna take in the House Finance Committee to uh, look uh, exhaustively at uh, the long-term future of the permanent fund itself, protecting the integrity of the corpus and certainly protecting uh, permanent fund dividends as we go forward in the time. We're ready here to uh, do work. Um, it's my fervent hope that the Senate will join us. Uh, we'll begin the conversations very soon. And again, I would uh, point back to the situation that we're in. I think it speaks for itself. Andrew Kitchenman, Alaska Public Radio Network. Uh, Representative Gary Knapp said after the speech that um, while he said some positive things about the governor, he uh, felt it wasn't the time to criticize the legislature, uh, which he felt he heard a lot of criticism from during the speech. What's your thoughts on the governor's uh, tone toward the legislature in the, the speech? Well, I don't uh, begrudge anyone for feeling frustration with the legislature. You know, I was here in 2016 when we spent nearly the entire summer wrangling over tough decisions that, uh, that we probably should have made back then. This past year, we spent uh, uh, well over 200 days in Juneau on decisions that uh, I think many of us would have liked to have made a lot sooner. So I don't think that, uh, that uh, anyone feeling frustrated with the legislature um, should um, you know, expect uh, anything less from us this year than to get our job done in a timely fashion. Emily Carlson from KTVA. Um, the governor said 90 days. You got 90 days, otherwise no per diem. What's your reaction? I know you guys got it done within 90 days, but is that kind of almost a threat needed for you guys to pass budget? Well, I think the governor talked about introducing legislation that after a 90-day period um, would uh, enact uh, or would uh, you know, basically uh, uh, stop legislative pay after that period. And you know what? I'm, I'm ready to go there. Whatever it takes to get our job done in short order, in a responsible manner, and to prove to Alaskans that we're serious about taking on the tough uh, uh, choices and to do what it's best to put uh, uh, our economy back into uh, uh, an order of being stable and certainly to protect essential services. Uh, I think we're ready to, uh, to get our work done. And uh, I'll speak for myself and not for the caucus or for anybody up here at the, the panel. Um, um, I will do whatever it takes, uh, and if it means having to give up my pay after 90 days, I will certainly do that. And I would like to add that just saying no isn't good, isn't good enough. I mean, it's uh, indecisive. Um, it's uh, not showing proper leadership. And the governor said it, and he said it best, that uh, we must make decisions and, and uh, uh, no action is not acceptable. So... Uh, putting our own limitations on ourselves, putting pink slips on us before we put pink slips on other people, makes sense. And I think that sometimes people really need an incentive, uh, a deadline. And not getting a salary and not getting per diem, uh, that provides 
a very, very definite deadline. Thanks, Rich Maurer again, Channel 2 News in Anchorage. Uh, so um, the governor talked about uh, getting the economy going again, uh, and he talked about a recovery plan that involves taxes. Uh, I know we've talked about taxes before in the previous years. Would you, the four, would, would, would this caucus support additional taxes for three years to, uh, to provide for more jobs? Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and take that. Uh, you know, we did pass a comprehensive sustainable fiscal plan that involved new taxes, um, new taxes both on uh, individuals in the state as well as uh, adjusting the oil taxes, uh, which is uh, our predominant uh, source of revenue, because they are too low at this point in time. Um, the question is, are we going to take the lead and pass another tax uh, because the sustainable fiscal plan was not taken up and no alternative was offered by the Senate? Personally, I'm waiting for the Senate to pass us a alternative. If this is the alternative they want to pass to us, I'm happy to consider it. But, you know, we've got a lot of um, things to accomplish. And so we don't want to beat our head against the wall and just throw something else out if it's, uh, if the Senate is committed to not diversifying our revenues. Diversifying our revenues is what we really need to do. Uh, and at this point in time, their commitment has been they were refusing to diversify our revenue sources. So that's not, um, you know, I'm not going to beat my head against that wall if it's, a, if it's a wall. If there's a negotiation, I'm happy to enter into a negotiation. But we have some really good things going. I mean, I, I was pleased with the governor's optimism uh, and his talking about working together to get something done. And frankly, we've got for the first time that I know of in history, uh, we have uh, Senate members, uh, minority members, and the full majority coming together to say, let's pass a separate appropriation bill for funding our education system, our K-12 system, so that we don't have to uh, have these layoffs of teachers across the state. Our municipalities and our school districts can function on passing one, designing one budget instead of three like they've been doing, can uh, be effective and, and efficient in theirs um, if they know that they're going to get the, the level they're funding. So, um, you know, I think that we are uh, looking at working together uh, in some aspects here, and so I'm optimistic as well. And I'm very, I'm very excited about that. Uh, my background before I came to the legislature was municipal government. And municipal government has been talking about a bill such as this from time immemorial. And it sounds like that just about everybody's on the same page about this now. So that's kind of exciting to me. So, so for, to follow up that question, uh, the Senate President said the other day that he sees us coming out of the recession and we don't need a tax and that people maybe were a little hysterical about pushing for a tax. Um, is that something that you would agree with, that we are coming out of recession automatically and that, and that any further effort to tax the citizens of Alaska is foolish? Well. We have a little slight increase in oil production, but the price of oil still remains pretty low in comparison uh, over the last uh, five or six years. It is my hope that someday the Senate majority will recognize that our state is teetering on a fiscal <clears throat> cliff. I don't know what evidence that they have to demonstrate that we're pulling out of a recovery or pulling into a recovery of our recession, um, but uh, we are going to be stuck in this lingering recession until they get get some imagination and uh, start taking action as we did last year and, and uh, share with us what, what they propose to do. Um, I learned a new term tonight um, from the governor, broad-based participation by individuals. <laughs> um, it's a longer way of saying, um, you know, new revenues. But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, solutions do exist, um, but it takes true leadership uh, to get them passed through the legislature and uh, we're just not going to beat our heads against the wall. We're going to wait and see what the Senate will do. I think I would chime in by saying that uh, 
in a perfect world, if the stock market could produce 13% rate of return for the permanent fund, if oil prices today hovering around $70 a barrel, uh, the good fortune of us being able to maintain oil production at 500,000 plus uh, uh, for this past year, the past couple of years, if all that were to stay intact, um, you know, maybe we wouldn't need new revenues. But I think we know that uh, with a little bit of examination and turning to the permanent fund trustees themselves and uh, all the analysis that they had done this past uh, fall by two world-renowned uh, portfolio managers and experts in market performance, they're looking at a, a global downturn. They're looking at uh, the permanent fund to not earn 13%, but perhaps as low as 5.2% for the upcoming 10 years. So if you project out a period of 10 years and you look at having a balanced budget, that means that you're going to have to cut more significantly than the reductions we already made. We just heard the governor say that uh, we've essentially cut the budget to where it's been about 15 years ago. State employees today are at 2002 levels. We had a capital budget this past year that was as small as the 1999 capital budget. So the question is to ask ourselves, what do we want Alaska to look like and do we want Alaska to grow? And if you want to play the percentages on the stock market and on the volatility of the oil industry and not make the tough choices, um, you know, that's not what our caucus wants to do. We're not willing to roll the dice with the people's future in the state. We think that uh, we need to make the tough choices. The new revenue measures that uh, the governor, I think, has put together, certainly I think what we passed last session, are fairly modest in terms of their uh, ability to ask Alaskans to pay uh, a small amount to keep schools open in our communities, to keep troopers on the streets, and to keep our roads plowed, and to keep certainty in our economy. We think that's the prudent course to take, and clearly, does it involve some political risk for us individually or collectively? It does, but we're willing to take that risk and willing to step forward and do what's best for the state. And, and I am personally not interested in a permanent fund only solution, a reduced permanent fund uh, dividend, while at the same time there's basically been no adjustment in oil taxes. I'm just not for my district. That is totally unacceptable. The governor talked about AKLNG tonight. Um, he was talking about how it's different from last year, the progress that he's made on it. I know the funding is running out this coming fiscal year. Did you guys, was it the answers that you were looking for in terms of AKLNG to keep this project going? What did you think of what he said tonight? Well, I, I, I'll go ahead and say that, you know, I think that that aligns with our view that we need to make sure that we keep this project going. It is the... Uh, hope for jobs. It is the uh, economic uh, potential uh, fill uh, for our future. So we don't want to be uh, pulling the plug on this. We're not uh, asked to um, put in more money. That's not needed at this point in time from the state. Um, but we're not interested in taking and pulling the plug on the project. We need to make sure that that goes forward and sees Alaska's potential. Well, with that, thank you, everyone. I uh, really appreciate you being here tonight. We will see you at our next press conference, which will be next